So it's possible to actually solve some chain rule problems without actually using the chain rule just by direct substitution. So I thought it would be useful to go through an example where we work it both ways and you can see how the chain rule works and how to avoid it if you want to. So I've got some reasonably hairy example here. So u is a function of x, y, and z, x to the fourth y plus y squared z cubed. Um, and then each of these variables in turn depends on three others. So x is a function of r, s, and t given by r, s times e to the t, y is equal to r, s squared e to the minus t, and z is equal to r squared s times sine of t. And we're asked to find the partial derivative of u with respect to s at 2, 1, 0. And maybe the first thing to point out here is that um, <clears throat> Back in the beginning, we're thinking of u as a function of x, y, and z. But then with this parameterization, under this parameterization, we're actually changing now to thinking of u as a function of, well, I guess the long way to write it would be like x of r, s, t, y of r, s, t, z of r, s, t but that's so horrible that most of the time you would just say u of r s t since fundamentally it depends on those three variables and that's telling you that we're looking at when r is equal to 2 and when s is equal to 1 and when t is equal to 0 so those values refer to r s and t not x y and z okay now let's go ahead and start crunching so buckle up here we go so the partial of u with respect to s is going to be um du dx dx ds plus du dy dy ds plus du dz dz ds and so now we're going to need to compute all of those components and stick them together. So let's see. So uh, the parcel of u with respect to x. So that's uh, d dx of, and then, so now let's look at um, u. So here we've got x to the fourth y plus y squared z cubed. And so differentiating with respect to x, I get uh, 4x cubed y, and then the other part just dies. And then, um, <coughs> so now doing the uh, y derivative, um, I'm going to get x to the fourth plus 2yz cubed. And then doing the z derivative, I uh, only pick up a z in the second term, so it's going to be 3y squared z squared. Okay, um, then I still have to do uh, dx ds. So that's going to be. Um, derivative with respect to s of the thing I was given for x, which is r s e to the t. And so that's going to be r e to the t. And dy ds. And y was r s squared e to the minus t. So uh, differentiating, I get 2 r s e to the minus t. And then for the last one, I've got uh, dz ds. Oops. And my formula for z was r squared s sine t. So differentiating with respect to s, I get r squared sine t. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so let's see now. So my uh, derivative of u with respect to s is going to be, uh, and now I just put these pieces together. So I've got 4x cubed y times um, r e to the t. 
and then I've got uh, x to the fourth plus two y z cubed times um, two r s e to the minus t, and then I've got um, three y squared z squared times r squared sine t. Okay, and so now this, this is looking kind of strange because I've got some parts of it that have x and y and some parts of it have rst or xyz and, and rst. Um, at this point, however, everything needs to be in terms of what's going on for rst. So let's see. So now I can uh, substitute in the values. So let's see. So if I have x at 2, 1, 0, because we're looking at when rst is equal to 2, 1, 0, that's going to be 2 times 1 times 1, so 2. And y at 2, 1, 0 is going to be uh, 2 times 1 squared times 1, which will give me 2. And then z at 2, 1, 0 is going to be 2 squared times 1 times 0, so that's going to be 0. So now I can substitute those values in back here. So I'll have uh, 4 times 2 cubed times 2 times 2 times 1 plus, and then I'm going to have, let's see, so that'll be 16 plus 0, and then 2 times 2 times 1 times 1, and 0 times 4 times 0. So that's all disappearing. And then I have uh, 1, 2, 128 plus 64 or 192. Bam. Okay. So there's our answer. That's one way of doing it. Okay. Uh, method two. is, let's see, so we could start off with u being, and now I'm, I'm going to substitute um, the x with the formula for r, s, and t that I have, right? So uh, this thing is actually given by r, s, e to the t. So when I put this uh, into u, and u is, um, let me just rewrite it. Then I've got that x to the fourth. So I'm going to have r s e to the t to the power of 4. And then I've got my formula for y, which was r s squared e to the minus t. And then I've got uh, y squared, which was r s squared e to the minus t squared times z cubed, so that's r squared s sine t cubed. Okay, um, and then I can beat on this with the algebra stick a little bit here and see what happens. So that gives us um, r to the fifth s to the sixth e to the three t plus r to the eighth s to the fifth uh, e to the minus 2t sine t. So if I wanted to find the derivative of u with respect to s, then this is uh, dds of this business that I just uh, worked out. Um, which is, let's see, so we've got 6r to the 5th, s to the 5th, e to the 3t, plus, and differentiating, so we've got 5r to the 8, s to the 4, 
e to the minus 2t sine t. Um, and so if I evaluate at 2, 1, 0, then I've got uh, 6 times 2 squared times 1 times 1. Um, wait, did I? Oh, 2 to the fifth. Sorry. That's what looked funny. Okay. Um, <clears throat> plus, and then there's like uh, I don't know, some crud times zero. And um, so two to the fifth times six. Uh, so that gives us 192. Hooray. They match. So in some situations, it'll be easier to do it one way. In other situations, it'll be easier to do it the other way. Um, it's not always clear in advance how to know which way to do it. So just gotta try both and hope you get lucky. Or try one and hope you get lucky.